up everybody this is hyperdocs welcome back to my channel uh, today we're going to be talking about building wealth over time using diablo 2 classic now a lot of people don't realize that there's a gold mine that is the classic community you're talking about people who i have seen spend fifteen thousand forum gold on a martel defer they really like we're also talking about a player base that has been playing Diablo 2 Classic for 20 years or more, and they have developed over that 20 years a large amount of wealth, and they're able to spend on items that you find, or on services that you offer. We're getting right into that now. The first and easiest thing that you can do is you can build a Classic Rush Sorceress. Now, what is a classic rush? Well, a classic rush is taking a person from Act 1 normal all the way through the game to Act 4 hell. If a person wants to play expansion, that's perfectly fine. You rush them, Act 1 normal, all the way through Act 4 hell. They convert their character, boom. Now they're level 2 or 3 in the Chaos Sanctuary picking up big experience. Because yes... You can get a lot of experience in the Chaos Sanctuary at levels 1, 2, 3, 4. It doesn't matter because of how much experience each monster uh, is pouring out, even with an experience code. Now, I'll be making a video on how to make a great Classic Rush Sorceress in a little while. But until then, I'm going to move on to the next thing. Now, you can actually combine the next thing I'm talking about with the Classic Rush Sorceress which is to offer enchant services. Now, if you make yourself an enchantress, who's also a classic rush sorceress, you can make a character who can not only rush people all the way up to hell difficulty, you can also get a high level enchant for the person you're rushing and all of their friends that you're rushing to. If you're looking at 100 forum gold for the classic rush, and then maybe another 100 forum gold for the enchant services, that can add up really quickly, especially if you're charging Per head in the game. People who want to level up quickly are going to want that eight player game that they can level up in. Now, of course, if you're playing the Nintendo Switch, you won't be able to do eight players, but you'll be able to do four. So you can very easily charge 100 forum gold for the rush and then 100 forum gold for enchant services for their friends. And then what do you do? You just chill. You give them an enchant when they ask for an enchant. In the meantime, you could be playing on another character, on another account, you could be whatever you're doing. All you do is enchant we need to enchant, and that's it. Maybe even provide a Ravenclaw bow for each of them. I've seen people get to level 25 within an hour. The third thing that you can do is you can make a gold find barbarian. You go to Travancore, you kill the rich council members, collect their gold, and gamble, gamble, gamble. And really what you want to be looking for is belts and boots. Belts and boots go for a pretty high premium, both on Classic and on Lord of Destruction. The way that you would handle a trade from Classic to Expansion is you would simply take the item that you want to sell, put it on a mule, and you'll be able to sell it on Expansion. Now, the big benefit of doing it this way is this. When you gamble on Expansion, there are less prefixes and less suffixes to roll. And because there's less, you have less likely chance of getting a prefix or a suffix that you don't want. So for example, 10% chance to cast level 3 charged bolt. That's never going to appear on a classic item. That will, it's just not an option that's available in the files. And because it's not in the files, you won't have to roll it. Also, while you're doing rushes or leveling up or enchanting or running your gold find barbarian, you're going to be coming across a lot of flawless uh, skulls. You take those flawless skulls, you cube them up into perfect skulls. Now, perfect skulls in the classic community are worth a lot. They're worth three forum gold each. And the reason for that is this. Diablo 2 Classic players use six perfect skulls to be able to re-roll a rare item uh, in order to try to get a better set of prefixes and 
suffixes on that item. Not only that, but because classic players do not have the Act 5 Larzuk socket quest, the only way to add a socket to an item is to use the precious Stone of Jordan with three perfect skulls. Because of that, perfect skulls actually have a considerable amount of value. So you can see I've been saving up my perfect skulls for just such an occasion. You're looking at 42 for gold. And it's not like I'm doing anything extra. I'm just saving them when I find them. But it's not just perfect skulls that have value. Again, your perfect gems can be sold to classic players who want to add a socket to an item or to Lord of Destruction players who want to re-roll small charms or grand charms or want to even use them in crafting. And like I said, the more preferable ones are going to be your perfect amethysts, your perfect rubies, and your perfect sapphires for crafting. But many people are going to want to have perfect gems just to re-roll those grand charms that they are finding off of Diablo and Bale to try to get that coveted plus one paladin combat skills with 45 life grand charm. Booyah. Each one of these is going to be worth between 1 and 0.5 form gold. And again, this is some. these are just gems that I've collected by just playing through the game. And I've sold many of them. And the last thing you can do is hunt for the Stone of Jordan. Now, the Stone of Jordan has a greater chance of dropping on Diablo 2 Classic for a couple of reasons. First, the Stone of Jordan is one of only three unique rings in the entire game. In Classic, you only have the Nagel Ring, the Mantled Ring, and the Coveted Stone of Jordan. Second, because the item pool is much smaller anyways, the chances of you finding the Stone of Jordan also goes up. It's not just that you have less unique rings, it's just that you have less unique items in general. Well, the last thing that you need to know is that because Andariel always has quest drops, the best way to find the Coveted Stone of Jordan is from her. However, Keep in mind, you cannot find the Stone of Jordan on the Nightmare on Dario in Classic. And Dario has to be killed in Hell Mode. However, the Stone of Jordan can be dropped as early as normal Diablo. With the highest chance of finding a Stone of Jordan in the game, either Lord of Destruction or Classic, is through Hell Mode Classic on Dario. We're going to do that right now. Well, not today. But it's always great when you do find one. Well, anyways, that's the video, guys. If you got value from this, do me a favor. Leave a like, hit the subscribe button, and follow for more Diablo 2 content. And remember guys, stay classic.